Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and I'm broadcasting from Los Angeles. And today topic, we're going to talk about be here now, be in this moment, the only moment that exists. Um, let's do our meditation as we always do uh, for the newcomers. We put everybody on mute because devices make funny noises, but you can unmute yourself when it comes to the time asking me a question or wave at me and I'll unmute you. Uh, we're going to do a 15 minute, 20 minute meditation first. After that, I'll give a talk and then you can ask me questions. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to our academy today. Uh, we're going to have a nice ride this morning. So let's, we're going to be doing a simple meditation. Um, simplicity is the key because when we make things complicated, quite often the mind will come and bring all kinds of excuses because it wants to get away from be, being silent. In other words, silence means you get rid of the mind, you go beyond the mind. And the mind always comes up with all kinds of excuses because it can't be here. It can be anywhere else but here because here it will be quiet. So doing a simple meditation, uh, one of the ways is simply we turn our attention inwards towards the source of all our thoughts. What's there before we think? Where do the thoughts come from? They must be coming from somewhere. But what is, what is there before you think? So if you investigate and like a thread, you go all the way back to the beginning of the thoughts, and you take a look, that means by bringing your attention into this place within yourself, to the source of your thoughts, and you look there before the thoughts begin, and if you do it right, then you will see it's silent. It's very quiet, there is no thoughts. So let's do that, turn your attention inwards towards the very source of your thoughts. Very simply, very easily, without even trying hard. It should be very effortless. So let's do that. Turn your attention inwards. Take a deep breath and relax into this moment. And bring your attention inwards to one point, to this place before thoughts arise. And let's see what's there.
Simply you're here, you're quiet, your attention is within, your attention is on the observer, the one who is aware, the one who observes, not what you are aware of or observing. You're simply here, but not engaged. Aware, yet free. You're free. By not being engaged with anything. You're simply hanging out in this moment. Free. You're not attached to anything. Simply being here, present in this moment, in a very natural state, you're relaxing and you disengage, you take your attention away from the world, thought process, whatever is happening, you're taking your attention towards the source of yourself where there is nothing going on. It's quiet. It's still. It's safe. Nothing's happening in the center of yourself. All is well. It's very, very calm. And as you are in this place, in the center of yourself, really focused, I would like you to pay attention to your heartbeat, to the pulse of your heart. bringing your attention to your heart chakra, heart center. And from this place, visualize a glowing light The light is glowing 
coming from your heart, from your heart chakra, the light is emanating to the outside, taking over your body. It's a bright golden light coming from within you. And this light has the power to transform everything. It's pure love. This love is coming from within yourself. And as it's expanding, anything that it comes in contact with, it transforms it. It changes everything to its own vibration, vibration of love, love, just love. Nothing can resist this vibration. There may be a little resistance or struggle, but everything melts into it. And this power, this light, this love is coming from the center of yourself. You are the source of it. You are the source of love. By sitting comfortably in meditation, disengaging from the world that appears to be real, disengaging from your thought process and bringing your attention inwards towards the source of yourself, you begin to experience a glowing light coming from the heart center. And this light, this love, begins to transform anything that it touches. So you're the very source of this. Just let it grow and let it grow. And this light, this love brings comfort. It brings reassurance that in the center of yourself, center of universe, all is well. And nothing's wrong. Simply being here, not forcing anything, allowing things to unfold. Not having an idea of how things should be, but surrendering to what is, what existence is offering in this moment.
simple and easy. Simply allow this vibration, the light, to take over. You're just relaxing into your natural state by disengaging from stuff. Mainly the world of thoughts. And by Simply doing that, the mystery takes over. Powerful life force presents itself and surrounds you. Because you have disengaged from the world of thoughts, the world of worry, fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and you have relaxed into this moment, which is very still, and not much goes on into it, because it's very full as it stands on its own. And now we can touch and feel the magnitude of this moment. Now you can slowly, slowly reverse the journey and shift your attention. When you shift your attention <coughs> to inward, inwardly, towards the source of thoughts, the mind becomes quiet, the heart opens, and love begins to flow. The presence reveals itself. The magic appears in life. And you see you're protected, you're taken care of because you're completely connected to life.
when you enter into this holy place within yourself, connection takes place and transmission begin to happen. There is transmission of energy, intelligence, that goes beyond time space. And we all become connected through our hearts to the unified field of oneness, to this energy field which is here available for those who are open to it, those who open their hearts. Calmness, peace, balance, love comes back to our lives. You tap into the natural, natural flow of life. An energy current. That naturally flows and you tap into it. And it's very soothing, comforting. It brings balance back to our lives. Okay, so now slowly, slowly shift your attention come back to your physical senses So as I mentioned, the topic of the day, today we're going to talk about naturally being here, here right now. And something that so many of us all over the world have a very difficult thing to do 
and somehow existence at this time in our life has pulled the plug on everybody so it's a mandatory meditation a mandatory um time off that we're forced to stay home and in this scenario that existence has led us to be in this situation has presented us with an incredible opportunity a golden opportunity to ascend to transcend our consciousness to the higher level to a higher frequency and this is a, a very unique opportunity for collective to do some inner work and uh obviously it's happening there's no way out there's nowhere to hide there's nowhere to go and um everyone's facing with the same thing everyone's questioning the nature of their existence everybody's on the edge of oh am i going to live or die am i going to get this nasty virus and my existence will come to an end so it forces you one way or the other because it's in the collective consciousness to question things which is really in so many ways it's a gift uh because we have a tendency uh obviously we like to control things and we we think we can be in control we think that by putting our stuff in a certain way uh the people we want to be around in a certain way whether we're manipulating things or not um uh, with our finances with our job with where we live with family friends you're always trying to rearrange things and the idea that it works for you and so that's a natural tendency that human beings have so the mind freaks out when it loses the sense of control that right now is this situation a lot of us cannot control what is happening and a um you don't know you may go down the street and to buy some grocery and maybe you get the virus so that's very freaky for some people oh my god i'm going to go there maybe i get the virus so i may die so it really forces you to pay attention to your existence uh something on ordinary basis we can fall asleep about and forget because at any moment something can happen to us and die it's not this virus any moment in life anything can happen but why is it that on ordinary basis we don't pay any attention to it but now that it's in our face all of a sudden we're really questioning it or worried about it so so in some ways this is a blessing because it forces us to come to some fundamentals is a i'm here now right now i'm alive and this is all i get but that is the same as before this pandemic happened or in a, in the coming time in the future it's always here and it's always now it can never be anything else and yesterday whatever you were doing was still here in that moment when you were doing it it was now and tomorrow when you're doing something again it's going to be here and it's going to be now so it's always going to be here and it's always going to be now it's never going to be something else the mind has this tendency 
to dwell in the past or bring the stories of the past and projecting it into the future so and what it by doing this it fortifies its existence it creates a some substance that i exist i'm in control and i have something to say when you disengage from the world of thoughts and you the process of self-inquiry kicks in self-awareness come and we begin to pay attention this is paying attention that's all it is paying attention because again before this pandemic for a lot of people sleepwalking not paying any attention and being in this dream even maybe they call themselves uh it's possible that they're calling themselves their spiritual or what whatever it is again the process is that as long as i can control things and have things in my way all is well the key is that being in this situation that you're not in control of anything so is it is are you still in this place all is well for you can you maintain your status can you maintain your composure or are you going to be bent out of shape it's very important we need to really look at this pay attention to it but if you're capable of bringing your attention inwards and go beyond the thoughts then you're going to find yourself that you're here okay and here is continuously fresh here doesn't have a story at this moment appears and you may have to deal with something in this moment and then the moment changes to the next moment so then there's going to be a fresh moment and then whatever that is you're going to deal with that one but it doesn't carry a story from the past and it's not projecting into the future it's purely it's just this and that right now so if you pay attention again attention you will see that the mind wants to make up stories it wants to attach something to this moment which creates fear or anxiety or it wants to go into the future and make make a projection or what's going to happen where are we going to go is financial world going to collapse are we going to be alive Da, 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 da. but it didn't know what was going to happen 10 years ago a year ago six months ago anyway but then it wasn't so much of a big deal as it is right now because its existence is being questioned so especially by the spiritual warrior and is making all kinds of stories but the truth of it is everything's the same nothing's changed i understand my internet got slow for a moment nothing has changed in the fundamental aspect of everything it's still here it's still right now you're still in this moment because you can't go anywhere else there's still one moment at a time to live you still have no idea what's going to happen in the future which you never know what's going to happen in the future anyway nobody knows what's going to happen in the future you don't know how many more minutes you're supposed to live you never knew how many minutes you're going to live the mind would like to make a story for you 
oh, I'm young, I'm going to live longer, blah, blah, blah. Someone else can get in a car accident and, and go, but not me. The mind plays these games. So, <clears throat> it's always here. Here doesn't have a story. Here is free. So we definitely want to bring this to our attention, bringing this aspect of this aspect of what is going on in our lives by attention. Shift of attention. This is just bringing your attention from one place and putting it on another place. That's all you do. And you can catch yourself. Where is my attention? All of a sudden, your attention will go into a story. Your attention goes into a future story which is really coming from the past. So you're not, you travel into the worlds of past and future because your attention goes somewhere else. And you're responsible for this process of self-observation, simply being, you can call it mindfulness, which I don't like that word, but I'm using it for simplic simplicity so you understand. Attention. You're putting your attention on something. So your attention can go on the past and stories of the past. And then whatever the story is, fear, worry, anxiety, regrets or you're patting yourself about you did something good and then it gets projected into a future moment which is not existing so then your attention goes there and then you're into trouble you dig yourself a hole that's how you set yourself up so, so once you become self-aware and recognize this, and so you bring your attention to here, shifting the attention from what is looking an object, like these thoughts are happening in your mind of the future, so your attention from within is on these objects the story, this thought process that you're having of future. The thought process about, oh, I feel so miserable. I'm stuck in this situation. I hate being here. When is this thing going to be over? When do we get out of this situation? A thought process begins to happen. A story begins to take form. And by not paying attention to it, this story starts to escalate. And it's like it grows, it feeds off of itself. But the moment you become aware of it, if you become aware that this is a story happening in your mind, your mind went somewhere, and then you just notice that and you come back here. Again, as I mentioned, attention. Your attention was on the story. Now you bring your attention to here, to this moment. You're coming back here. As your attention shifts again, all of a sudden, 
you come back to here and you don't even have to try to meditate or anything or sit in a meditative posture. No, it doesn't require anything. It's simply you are unconditioning a lifetime of conditioning. For a lifetime, the mind and you're used to doing this thing and you're not aware of it and it creates suffering. Now this pandemic, this situation has animated everything, exaggerated everything, so it's right into your face and you're forced to stay home. So the mind naturally wants to go crazy and do its thing. So this is a golden opportunity to get tackle this issue once and forever. But when you start working on it, you have to understand this is a lifetime or life's time, thousands of different lives have come and gone. And all of this life, in this life also, you're used to one way of being, which is the mind running loose and it does its thing, especially when it doesn't get what it wants. So you have uncon unconsciously been fortifying this. So now your attention has shifted. You're starting to become aware of this story that the mind is taking you for rides to all over. So you, it's going to take a little bit of time to shift your attention. You have to train yourself to do that because naturally the mind wants to go there. You have to grab it and bring it back by becoming aware of it. But as you do that, what happens is you're going to discover that you're not suffering. Suffering starts to go away. You can think, you can choose, or you can think for example, that poor me, I feel sorry for myself. I'm stuck in this room. I'm stuck in this apartment by myself or a house. Some of, some of us are alone. Uh, maybe you're in a small place, um, isolated, not in touch with a lot of people. And the mind goes to this thing, poor me, and I'm stuck here. And I hate it. Or you can look at it this way that I'm in a Buddhist monastery. I'm in a Zen monastery. I'm in Tibet and I'm doing a retreat. I'm do doing workshop. I'm in a retreat now. And then this place is to teach me to be alone on my own to bring my attention to myself, to be here. And by bringing my attention to the source of myself, I'm working on establishing this connection with the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme, the love of God, the actual God, the spirit that lives inside you. And it's here, it surrounds you. When you disengage from the world outside and bring your attention inward, you begin to find this connection. Or you may call it intuitive knowing. Intuitively, I know this. I know that. I'm getting these messages. Uh, someone may say, well, these are my guides speaking to me. Or I'm channeling. Whatever name you want to put into it or relationship in your mind, your thoughts, you feel you have, the point is that you have established a connection with the spirit that you're becoming aware of. And this connection, 
this you're establishing a direct communication with your own being you can call it my guides you can call it my intuition you can call it spirits angels my guardian angels whatever name you want to call it it's okay i don't have a problem with it but what i would like you to understand is that's the connection with the living spirit or her majesty the supreme being and you have noticing this direct dialogue that you have this communication that you begin to have that the living spirit talks to you communicates with you and that communication happens in here and now so the more we work on this project of unclutching deconditioning taking our attention off of the mind that's wandering our over all over the place and we're bringing the attention more towards the source of ourselves the more you begin to feel and have this connection with your own being this direct communication direct line you find it in yourself maybe before you needed a guru a teacher you go to a healer channeler or you're reading a book but now you start to experiencing it directly and as you're having this internal dialogue or connection in a healthy way then you begin to see and feel that there's a presence around you there's a powerful presence here you can call it your auric field you can call it the angels or again whatever name you want to add to it it's your choice the fact that you begin to feel the presence of god her majesty the supreme soul is here here within you around you completely protecting you and carrying you completely totally carrying you and this whole story that has happened we can look at it in this way of the pandemic of this force majeure this situation that we're put in a room which to some people may be like a cage or your prison or whatever and uh, we can turn the poison to medicine and using this golden opportunity to recognize the being within ourselves by paying attention again the key words paying attention taking your attention off of something which is false which you've been doing all of your life putting your attention on a thought oh i don't love myself i don't have any self esteem i'm not good enough i have all these bad habits i can't quit sugar da 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 da, da, da stories that your mind plays for you i'm lonely nobody loves me i can't find my partner I'm never going to find the love of my life. I'm never going to make it. What's going to happen? Oh my god, I'm so worried. What's going to happen? Am I going to die? 
Ada da 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 The more you're paying attention, you're bringing your attention towards the source of yourself, the more you start to feel the presence, the field of energy, the love, and you're transforming into here and now because that's where it is and it's always here. It's unconditional. The presence and your connection to God, the presence of the Spirit has nothing to do with anything. It's not conditional. Oh, only I wish this situation would end and I would go to Caribbean islands and I would be happy. It's not somewhere else, it's here. And if you pay attention to it and do, the, do your work right, you will begin to feel it here and you will feel the bliss, the joy, tremendous amount of bliss and joy and satisfaction and balance here in this moment, wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what condition you're in. You may be ill. You may be broke, you may be well, doesn't matter. It's always here because it comes from within your own self. That's where it is. It's not coming from somewhere else. It's not subject to a location or a time. So this transformation, ascension to fifth dimension we're talking about transcending that a lot of people speak about or we've read about it or heard about it or we feel it. It's not possible, it's impossible. You cannot transcend to this higher dimension unless you learn the fundamentals, the ABCD of the language of how to transcend, and that is to be here, to be here and now, in this place, wherever you are. And in here, you begin to feel the presence, and that by itself transforms you. It's an automatic process that takes place. You don't need to do anything about it, because it is a part of the evolution. As you don't have to think about your hair growing, it grows on its own. You don't need to worry about it or figure out how it works. Same thing, no difference. It's just putting your attention in this place. And then bless begin to appear no matter where you are. But if you think it's a condition, if you think that all the conditions have to be right according to the way you like it, then you are going to make it, then you're dreaming and you're gonna stay in the dream because your mind is projecting, again, it's tricking you. Because this is to go beyond the mind into the presence, into silence. This is not the mind. This is the presence. The presence is different than the mind. The presence is here all the time. The mind is all over. So this is our golden opportunity to do it now.
it's perfect. We're locked down. There's not much entertainment, so why not do it? Maybe something good comes out of it. You never know. Obviously, your old ways don't work. So why not try something else? Why don't I just pay attention to the being? Okay, anybody has any questions for me? You can unmute yourself or you can write on the chat box or wave at me. No questions, okay. I have a question. This is Terrell and Noel. Yeah, hello. Hello, everyone. Are you ready for my yeah, question? Yeah, welcome. Yes, Thank absolutely. You. Go ahead. Um, when you mentioned, of course, the mind is, is there a technique or a tool that can be used when you can observe your mind just moving, you know, going from topic to topic, it just keeps going and you, you see it, you realize it's doing that. Is there something to stop it? It's very annoying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, you can't stop the mind by the mind. So, but you notice that your mind is moving. Uh, are you, maybe you keep yourself unmuted so we okay. can talk. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned uh, that you, you, are seeing the mind moving you you see movement correct Thoughts. yes yeah exactly so that you're seeing things moving in front of you then you must be somewhere stationary that you're noticing movement so where is your seat inside yourself where is your location? You have to have a location uh, somewhere that you're speaking to me. Uh, and from the location you're at right now, you have noticed that the mind is busy. You notice thoughts. So you must be somewhere stationary, the real you, that is noticing something's moving, the movement of thoughts, because thoughts come and go. So they appear to somebody. Somebody is you, noticing dear. it. Yeah. So who is this person who notices the thought? Well, so my understanding you may say, is like, go ahead. My understanding is the higher you know, my higher self witnessing the, all of the, the thoughts, but it just becomes a little tiresome to be constantly, it's just like a flurry of them jumping from topic to topic and just witnessing it. I don't know, I feel a little exhausted watching right. it. Sometimes. Right, right. It's exhausting because, <clears throat> it's exhausting because your attention is on the thoughts your attention is not on the one who notices the thoughts. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's just, uh, this is a very valid question, concern. I'm glad you brought this up. And this is something everybody struggles with. All right, so let's do this. I want you to take your attention inwards to the source where the observer is. Okay, and we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to call it you. Uh, Terlin, right? Yes, Terlin. Terlin. Terlin, yes. Terlin. Okay, Terlin, it's you. 
So you are somewhere stationary and you're aware of your thoughts. So, okay, let's take a look. Look into your mind right now and see what you're thinking. Do you have any thoughts? Actually, no, when I took a look in there, there wasn't, there wasn't a thought. That was interesting. <laughs> right. So, and did you put any effort in stopping your mind? No. No. So it's effortless. The hmm. reason, the reason it works is because what I did was I simply help you bring your attention on the observer, the one, Terilyn, who's aware, not what she's aware of. Before your attention was on the thoughts moving and you weren't even aware of it. So you believe that's who you are because that's what you've been told from childhood and everybody else acts the same way. So whatever you're thinking, you think that's who you are. And now you come and meet th this person is telling you, you're not your thoughts, you're the observer of your thoughts. Your thoughts come and go, but you don't. You're here and something is traveling in front of you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you're simply bringing your attention back to the observer. You can call it higher self. You can, sell, you can call it yourself, you. Not what you're thinking and not what you're feeling either. Your, your emotions, they're passing through as well. Okay? Okay. You're the observer of your emotions because they come and go. And when you have, when you're depressed, you make a rep report. You say, oh my God, I'm depressed. Or I'm afraid, or I am happy, or I'm angry. So you identify with the emotion and you become that emotion. But if you shift your language to Depression, when you feel depressed, you say depression is being here, is being observed. And you feel it. But you said it's being observed. That means you're not it. You're noticing its presence is passing through. But you're not it. You're remaining who you are, which is the observer. And you're not identifying with anything. You're Thank simply, you. yeah, you're simply observing it. Same. When you mentioned, when you, mentioned uh, when you first started speaking and you said, just stop and look, like, for lack of a better word, just go back with, go within to the, I'd like to sum up, to merge, I don't know if that's a proper word, but to just look at the higher self, then all of a sudden, the stop the thoughts just seemed to just seem like they stopped. It felt kind of a sense of peace because yes, that was a refresh. That was quite refreshing. <laughs> yes, that, that absolutely. Makes sense. Especially right now that that the collective mind is very agitated and it's it's very active. So, and with all the fear, worry, anxiety that is being pumped in the air. And uh, so the mind is very active all the time. It's exhausting. But the moment, see, I'm glad you brought this up. It's, it's super simple. You shift your attention from what you're not trying to stop your thoughts, but from paying attention to them, you bring your attention to the source of your thoughts, inwards. And the moment you did that, you took a journey within and you went back to who you are. The observer, the one who's aware, the witness, the Buddha, 
she is sitting here like this. And she's not involved with what she's observing. She's simply aware of thoughts. And she is simply aware of emotions come and go. The real you does not identify with them. It's simply aware of them. May make a report. Oh, sadness is here. Oh, anxiety is here. Fear is here. You hear that report by the mind. It will make a report to you. So if you remember who you are, then slowly you're going to see that they have no effect on you. They come and go. That's it. They've always been doing it. There's never been any other way. And they lose. The mind loses its grip. And you begin to feel free. Freedom comes. Peace comes back. Because peace is within us. It's here. It's in the absence of the thinking mind. When you shift from the world of the mind, which is chaos, it's all thoughts, blah, 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 blah. And you bring your attention inwards. And this is where the kingdom of heaven is. You come back to silence. It's quiet. Nothing's happening. It's very still as if you're in the middle of the desert and no one's around or you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean turquoise beautiful green pristine water very clear very calm you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean getting sun sunshine on your face and there's nothing happening that's how it feels. You come back to the center of yourself, which is absolutely silent. And this story of what's going on in the world right now, it's happening to make you find this place inside yourself. That's why we're in this situation for the spiritual warrior. We've been given this opportunity to discover this place inside ourselves, to find a real sanctuary and to discover our freedom, that you are free by discovering this place because no one and nothing can ever affect this place. This place is always here. Thank you. Yeah, so you're saying when you're observing, because I did attend your workshop at the Gateway, and when, and you can step, take a step back and uh, see the thoughts, just the movement of the various thoughts, but, and that is the observer watching them, but I like what you said in the beginning, just kind of take a, go a little bit deeper within because sometimes just even witnessing all those thoughts, maybe that is, kind of, if I'm not saying it properly, but it just, just witnessing so many of them just seems to rob me even somewhat of my peace because I'm witnessing the mind just keep bouncing from topic to topic to topic. Exactly. Yes. Yes, that's correct. At one point, enough is enough. Right. Then you bring your attention from the thoughts to the source of them. Mm. And then boom, bang, everything is silent. Mm. But you have to pay attention to this. This has to be a part of your regime, a daily regime, to catch yourself when you get involved and bring yourself back. And what happens like anything else in life you retrain yourself because it brings you peace and joy. So naturally your being is going to cooperate. Mm. But in the beginning, you, it may, you may feel like an effort, but you mm. got to put your attention on it in the beginning because naturally we want to get pulled back into the thousand-year-old habit, 
which is identifying with the thoughts. So you catch yourself, you bring yourself back, and it's peaceful. Then again, something happens, you catch yourself, you bring yourself back here, here in this moment, here, right now. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You You're welcome. Your, your patience, you. everyone. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I have a question here from Cecilia. Zarathustra, you had say some of the time that our thoughts are part of the collective. So if the thought is not mine, is this practice still valid or there is something different to do? Okay, this is a good question. One of our friends says that, uh, referring to one time I was saying that the thoughts that we have, they're part of the collective. So whether the thoughts that passing through our minds are part of the collective or not, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the bottom line is that by bringing our attention inwards towards the source of ourselves, we're going to have the same effect and same results that we're aiming at. The aim, the goal of this work is to be happy, to be in bliss. And it's impossible to be happy and to be in bliss if you engage with your thinking process and you believe your thinking process is real and the world of thoughts, because the world of the thoughts also has created the world that you're seeing. This world that we're looking at is a part of the world of thoughts, which where there is no thoughts, it also disappears. So we do the same thing. Whatever is the story, it doesn't matter. We keep bringing our attention inwards so some people may say, well, what do you mean bringing your attention inwards? I'm going to go over this one more time to make sure you understand it. I have a hard time bringing my attention inwards. I don't know what that is. Okay, make it very simple. Where, imagine, this is only in your imagination. You're following your thoughts, a string of thoughts. You go, you go back in, back in, back in. and you get to a place, let's say there's a, there's a pool, there's a lake, there's a straight lake, flat water, and you follow these thoughts back and it comes to this lake. So, and you dive into the lake and there's no thoughts, there's nothing. But above the lake, thought starts to appear. But inside the lake, there is nothing. There is no manufacturer. It doesn't manufacture anything. And it's silent. I'm just using this as an example. So what I'm saying is when you follow this string, the thread of your thoughts back to the origin, you will see there is no thoughts. It's quiet. Before you think, there is nothing. It's silence. No one ever told us that. No one ever educated us. And today, most spiritual teachings, they're promoting thoughts, manifesting with your thoughts, creating your reality, um, blah, blah, blah. It's fortifying the thoughts. So therefore, you keep engaged in the world of the thoughts and suffering comes. We want to be free from thoughts. We want to go inward to that place which is always silent inside. It's peaceful, it's quiet. Ah, oh, you can relax. And that place is inside yourself. And to access it, you have to go beyond the thoughts. And to go beyond the thoughts, as I mentioned, you follow the string of thoughts back to the source. 
That's one way you do. And then everything becomes quiet. Maybe you use a breathing exercise and you bring your attention on your breath. Maybe you're doing a mantra. Whatever works for you. But keep looking for this place. Bring your attention to this place. And know that this place, where the observer is, where the real you is, where silence is, it cannot be disturbed. It doesn't matter what happened. This place is permanent. It's always there. It's not a place you gain. If you gain it, you can also lose it. It's a place that is always there. You're just noticing this place. It's not something that you got from somewhere and you can lose it. You're simply becoming aware of this place, this ancient place that has always been within yourself. And now the Supreme Soul, the Creator, has created this situation for us to actively go in and find this place because this place wants to reveal itself to you. It wants you to find it. That's why it's created this scenario of what is going on in the world because it wants you to find it. And by finding it, you're going to become free. You become liberated. So it's all good. All of it is good. We're all in very good hands. Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Being, Lord God, is handling everything perfectly, is carrying all of us beautifully. You stay in your center, you stay in trust, you stay in this place. You trust God will take care of you. You give, you give this, your sense of control to God. Let God carry you. Let God take care of everything. And God will help you to recognize yourself. Everything is taken care of. You don't need to worry and freak out. It's taken care of. It's all is in good hands. Very good hands. I assure you. Love has brought us to this place to reveal itself to us. And it's happening. Many people are awakening all over the world. Many people beginning to really feel the truth of who they are and tabbing into their source, the source of love, discovering that we are the source. It's really coming from here from yourself, not the egoic person, not the sense of me, oh, look at me, look at me. I'm not talking about that. The presence, in the absence of thinking mind, your presence, your being. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're in a process of uh, putting out uh, three new online training training programs. One is how to feel, touch, and restore the auric field. That's already put out. The second one is um, 5D quantum awareness uh, teachings. And the episode one is ready and it's going to be on my website as well as uh, finished up an online training uh, course, which is uh, distant healing. So we have new products. 
uh, feel free to visit my website, zaratustra.tv. Um, I haven't scheduled any workshops yet, but I will do it. Uh, our next academy is going to be next two, uh, next Wednesday, same time. So I look forward to seeing you all, sending you lots of love and light. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.